first we were looked on as sort of like a bunch of silly kids. Growing up, we had a good idea of what we wanted to sound like. We just started writing these songs, and we're like, they sound good, and they're really simple. The idea of the kind of music that we were playing being really popular was just out of the question. And then we ended up putting out Dookie. It's about like lack of sex, teenage agony, and being totally bored, you know, being a complete loser. And that's when things for me were just like, wow, this is huge, you know, and this is not gonna stop. We set that bar, and, and then we sort of looked at ourselves like, okay, now we have a mountain to climb. We want to, you know, go in different directions. I don't want to play, like, three-chord punk forever. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. It was such a change of pace for us. It's just trying to take that sort of power pop and kind of stretching it into places that are further than we've ever gone. I hope you had the time of your life. How can we segue one thing into the next? But that's what you have to do if you want to have any longevity. I looked at these guys and said, you know, do you guys mind if I'm saying these things? And they were like, no, I wish you would say more. Any political song I've ever written has been about the state of confusion. Hey, can you hear the sound of the stereo? The subliminal mind fuck America. A lot of people are feeling a bit more disenfranchised or feeling a bit more isolated. They want something, they want to rally around something. I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna lay down and roll over and be safe, or are you gonna stick your neck out and say what's supposed to be said? The great thing is, is nothing is too far-fetched for us to do, as long as it comes out the way Green Day would do it. 100 years from now, I'm not gonna be here. What's gonna be here is our music. You know, you just keep evolving, and I think that we're capable of doing anything. Please welcome Fallout Boy. So, one day some friends got me to sneak out of class, and we were gonna pretend to be bad kids, you know? And mostly we just went in the hallway and listened to this cassette tape that one of them had. It was Dookie. Now, the thing that... Dookie, excellent album. So the thing that struck me right off the bat was how musical it was. It was all the things that you'd expect in punk rock. It was angry, it was loud, it was fast. But there were these subtle overtones of, of an awareness of music theory and music history that were wise beyond its years. After that, I was all in. I tried to dress like them. I tried to play my dad's acoustic real low like Billy Joe did, and it did not look cool, it did not work on me. I followed every interview. I watched every TV performance. And the more immersed in their world I got, the more I could tell that this band was one of the greats. Great bands have to feed on the strength of the collective. Every sound that came out of these three guys was as important to the entire thing. I mean, it was the, you couldn't remove one guy. Billy Joe's signature snarl and sarcastic lyrics, that eternally youthful voice, those bright open chord structures, the way a silhouette of him playing guitar would be as recognizable a posture to any punk rock kid as Michael Jordan's mid-air dunk would be to a sports fan. Mike Dern. Mike Dern's aggressively, yes, yes. Mike Dern's melodic bass lines. When you turn on the radio, you know who's playing. That's epic. Trey Cool. You have a drummer. Your drummer is named Trey fucking Cool. That is the coolest thing ever. Now, no one else can really do anything the way Green Day does. When you followed up your massive major label debut with a single about methamphetamine and another one that had two movements, that was pretty punk rock. 
When conventional wisdom demanded another fast, loud punk song, and instead you put down a stripped-down ballad as a single, which became the go-to prom song for a decade, that was pretty punk rock. When in an era of basically no socially conscious discourse in pop music, you put out a scathingly political rock opera and somehow managed to make that your career redefining, Grammy winning, smash hit second act, that was insanely fucking punk rock. Everything you guys do is punk rock in the sense that you've never gone for the easy route. The obvious route, the safe route. So let some Reddit feed argue the definition of punk rock. Me? I already have my answer. It is our great honor to induct Green Day into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Fuckers, coming here. We love you. Uh, they don't let drummers use teleprompters. So I wrote this shit old school on a fucking typewriter. No, actually, we're all in this room together to celebrate music, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's overwhelming, the amount of talent and, and love in the room. We were playing punk clubs, squats, backyard parties. We were screen printing t-shirts on Billy Joe's guitar case and hanging them in people's backyards, sleeping on floors, couches, wherever we could. I didn't think back then that we'd be here now in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I thought it would take at least another year or two. Being inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is an enormous honor. And uh, I'd like to mention a few people who make my crazy world turn around. My beautiful wife, Sarah Rose. <laughs> Ramona and Frankie, my kids. My mom and dad, Frank and Linda. My sister, Lori, who actually um, brought music into our home in an early age. And uh, I love you, love you all. Of course, Billy and Mike, love you guys. The big three, Jason, Jason, Jeff. Larry Livermore, who gave me the name Trey Cool when I was a wee lad of about 11 or 12, and I fought him as hard as I could on that, but I'm fucking stuck with it. I'm in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now. And I owe so much to my favorite drummers, Ringo Starr, Keith Moon, John Bonham, Mitch Mitchell, Charlie Watts, Buddy Rich, and extra special thanks to my good buddy and drummer extraordinaire, John Kiffmeyer, right over there. And of course, to the Green Day Idiot Nation, we love you, thank you. It's unanimous. None of us like teleprompters. <laughs> uh, I got a couple things, no particular order. Uh, first and foremost, I also have a mom uh, who gave me a guitar, a little pawn shop bass, and it only had two strings on it. They were flat wounds, but luckily for me, they were A and E, so I was halfway there. A uh, huge thank you to all the kids who booked us in small vets, halls, and backyards. In Europe, all the people who booked us in clubs and squats and to the hundreds of people whose floors you let us sleep on, thank you very much. Those were life-changing experiences, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, randomly, I would like to thank the Ford Motor Company <laughs> for creating the Ford Econoline van, the best damn van any smelly touring van could have. <laughs> um, I'm sure a lot of the musicians in this room will, um, and everybody who are family of the musicians can understand this one. Um, I want to thank our friends and family at home 
for allowing us to be gone so much of our lives and still being there for us. It meant a lot to us over the years, and it still really does. Thank you. <laughs> to the Armstrong family, I want to thank you guys for taking me in as a kid, figuratively and literally. Thanks for letting me live with you. <laughs> to my amazing wife, Brittany, you are a wonderful mother. You kicked cancer's ass last year. Thank you. You're a great partner in crime. I love you, Brady Kitty. To my children, Estelle, my lovely daughter here, uh, my son Brixton at home, and my daughter Ryan at home, I love you guys, and each one of you is my entire world. Thank you. To every one of our fans, and to the Idiot Nation, this is, this is much more about you guys than it is about me. And I'm very proud to share this life on Earth with you. Thank you. Last but not least, to my two brothers behind me on stage here, believe me, it's been way too many years to want to count. I love you guys. I'll see you at band practice. <laughs> I feel like I'm in line at the DMV or something. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know, I'm kind of lost for words right now. Um, the gratitude that I feel right now is overwhelming, and I didn't really, uh, I didn't really know how to prepare for something like this, so uh, I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't really write a speech, so I'm just gonna make it up at the top of my head, but with a few talking points, so. Uh, I mean, first off, I just want to thank my family, my boys, Jacob and Joey, you guys blow me away every day. And uh, Adrian, I love you, we've been married forever. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a rare thing in this crazy rock world, uh, and I love you so much, you're the best. And uh, I, I want to, uh, I got to thank my mom, Ollie Louise Armstrong, she's from Oklahoma, uh, moved to California. The one thing that I'm so grateful for is all of the music that was in our house. It's like from my brother, my oldest brother, Alan, he, he, you know, he had, uh, First time I heard the Beatles and the Stones and the Kinks, and um, my sister Marcy was pretty much the person that showed me Elvis Presley for the first time, and I, you know, I thank you. Uh, and uh, my sister Holly is like cool in the gang, <laughs> and um, <laughs> my sister Anna, who basically that record collection that you have turned my world inside out. I thank you so much. Um, um, it was anything, it's like a lot of people here right now. It's like my record collection is actually sitting in this room. You know? I mean, the fact that I got to hear a, an album like Horses by Patti Smith, man, I... And, and there you are. I love it. This is great. And, uh, um, my house was like rock and roll high school. I mean, literally, I mean, it was nuts. I mean, all my... Friends would come into my house and say, like, where do you smoke weed at? It's like, go to the Armstrong house, you know? <laughs> no, I didn't have a mom. Um, my bandmates, Mike, me and Mike, basically me and Mike got together, um, I think it was the fifth grade. I, I walk up and then I was like the class clown, but Mike was like the class clown. And so it was kind of like this dueling banjos that was gonna go back and forth. It was like, so, you know, we both were, you know, what you get is deliverance. <laughs> well, anyways, Mike, you are my, my musical soulmate, man. I love you so much, and we've been through everything together and this whole thing, and I thank you so much for everything, your friendship, your family. I love you. I met Trey was playing at this band called The Lookouts, and they were... Um, I was like, they have this really young drummer, and he was back, and he was wearing a old lady shower cap and a tutu. 
And so that's the first time I, met, I saw Trey, and I was like, oh, cool. Um, if there is one instrument that I love to hear, and it's because my father is a jazz drummer, my brother is a drummer, my uncle is a drummer, I'm the oddball. And, uh, but Trey is just a phenomenal, and he pushes, and he, he's the most dangerous drummer on the planet, I, and I love this guy. Um, we've only worked with two producers in our entire career, and the, the, we, Butch Big did one record, so thank you, Butch. But Rob, you did all of them, Rob Caballo. Thank you, Rob. Tim, Tim Armstrong, I love you, brother. Pat Mangarella, you're a brave man. You're our manager. I want to apologize for the hotel rooms. I want to apologize for Trey's drum sets catching on fire. I want to, uh, you know, thanks for rehab. And thanks for doing those talks that we were not capable of doing. So thank you. Thanks a lot. We love. I love you. All right. Um, and in closing, so we come from this place. It's called Gilman Street. It's a club. It's in Berkeley. And uh, I am so fortunate. We are so fortunate to be able to to, to play there. It was like romper room for degenerates. It was so great. And I got to see Operation Ivy. And I got to see. Crim Shrine, and I got to see Sewer Trout and Nasal Sex and these out, far out there bands. And I, I am uh, truly fortunate. And But, um, you know, I just, I love rock and roll music. I always have. As soon as I opened my eyes and took my first breath, I am a fan. And that's the one thing that I'm going to close with is that I love rock and roll, and I'll love it for the rest of my life. Thank you.
Don't wanna be an American idiot. One nation controlled by the media. Information age of the Syria. It's calling out to idiot America. Wouldn't you want to come and check it?
Sometimes I give myself a crit Sometimes I mind play tricks on me It all keeps setting up It's bringing me down oh, I went to a whore Beside my eyes a boy So I cleared my mind And cause it's bringing me down To judge I give myself a curse To judge I mind by tricks on me The law keeps setting Shut it up. 